<laughs> this time we have arrived in style, I have to admit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Atom Rowing Playing Game. I am Neo Damant, and today I'll be solving issues of Paragon because this city. It has issues, man! Basically, if you haven't watched the previous episodes, there are two people at the moment ruling technically over the city. The leader of the traders and the leader of the guard. And then there is the third guy who apparently used to be the only leader around here, but apparently the trader and the head of security grown so much in power that basically they ignore him completely. So now that guy have hired us to somehow solve the issues of the other two. How exactly are we gonna do that thing? Not exactly sure, however, um, I think we can actually tag them to cooperation. But before I'm gonna do anything, as you can see over here, uh, I need to convince head of the traders to accept Fyodor's Maxovich to judge their dispute with the head guard. And then I have to do the same thing to the head of the guards. Uh, so to convince them, I actually probably need to do some speech crafting over here. So I'm gonna add myself like a few points. Like, I think 95 should be more than enough to deal with this threat. You carefully step into the main trader's quarters. He's busy with some documents. But, as you come into studies... <laughs> uh, but as you come in, he studies you for a bit, then asks... What is your business with me? And also I want to point out that he looks like fucking Russian version of Steve Jobs. Uh, Fyodor Maxovich sent me to deal with you. Okay? His gaze grows strong as he straightens his back. Deal about what? He wants you to leave your post and give him full control of trade in, in Paragon. He wants to take care of you as well as the head of the card. Permanently. He wants to enforce the rule of the law in Paragon. He's pretty shaky right now. He wants to give the city of power in Paragon to Kazadimi. Uh, okay, well I could try to kill him, so I have saved the game just in case if things will go really south. Uh, let's just be honest with him and tell him to fuck off. He takes off his glasses and starts polishing them with a handcuff. Holy shit, this guy is like mixing uh, Steve Jobs along with Lin uh, Tywin Lannister. The old fox, I never expected this from him. <laughs> never. The trader slams his fist down the table. It's so sudden you jump a bit. The son of a bitch! Who does he think he is? Those old bastards, he can, can control the space better than me! The only thing he can do is go die. Damn it, I'm surrounded by freaks! Bastard! I will! He quickly. As quickly as he flared up in rage, Amorov calm, falls calm again. He sighs and continues clearing his glasses. Now here's a sweet offer for you. Kill old man Mazdiv and Sliklovsky, the head guard, along with him. I'll give you 1,500 for each one. Good money, and you will use it nicely. What do you say? <laughs> I don't know. Can we discuss a bigger sum? Why don't you send your own guns after him? Sounds like a plan. I work for you. Hold on. You should, uh, okay, so apparently I cannot convince him. I'm not gonna tell him that I'm gonna work for him, because this is the thing, okay? I'm guessing that the developers are like fans of Fallout. The thing with Fallout was, uh, basically with Fallout 2, is that that game really focused on the good outcomes. So basically, if you have a situation like this, that means that the best option for the city and for you was to convince everybody to go along peacefully. If you're gonna like shut up one side of the conflict, then basically you didn't get like the full reward. All right. So this guy is offering me, uh, if I understand this thing correctly, three thousand. So I'm guessing that if I'm gonna convince him and along with the head of the security to work along, then I'm gonna get a lot more from the guy who actually gave me the quest in the first place. Um, okay, so I don't know, can we discuss a bigger sum? Why don't you save, why don't you send your own guns after him? <laughs> why don't I send you instead? I don't trust a lot of people, and those I do trust are too honest for such a job. You're a suspicious fellow, but you'd like to get your hands on some cash now? Hmm, plus, what you're going to do, tell them I tried to hire you. That's all the news, they both knew I wanted them dead. Yeah, interesting. So I could try to take him out silently, hold on. Can we discuss a bigger sum? Perhaps, but only after you dispose of two pain in my asses. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's. You should try to deal with Maxkovich first. <laughs> Who's here to talk? Choke the life out of him, and that will be that. Speechcraft. It's not actually trying to take your business away. He wants you to contribute by solving problems. Ha! 
Work it! Success! Thinks it's over for a few minutes. Seems like your words have done the trick. He just wants to help me solving problems, problematic situations. <laughs> well, that doesn't sound too bad. Screw it! I agree to delegate him some of my work. Good choice. Okay. So we got one guy to work with us. Actually, hold on. Can I check your bloody ass office? Please tell me I can check your bloody ass office. Yeah, he completely doesn't mind. Ah. Oh. He doesn't deal kindly with thieves. Okay, can I pickpocket you? <laughs> For a head of the trade union, <laughs> you're not really rich. Okay, there's something under the bed. Okay, some old crap over here. Right, good thing I can actually highlight the things around. I don't think he has anything valuable in his office. Yeah, completely waste of my time. Uh, right, is there like anyone else who, who I can talk here with? I think this guy over here was kind of like talking about something. White bed lies large, hefty man of the middle age, yada yada yada. No check in the room. There were no guards outside, so... Ah, oh, look at that one. What a weakling. Why are you here? Why are you so interested? I go where I want. Send me to the count. court if you're against it. Ha, oh, are you a fighter, eh? I like that. Ha, oh, I'm not mad. What do you want? Who are you? Maybe I can help you with something. You? Ha! <laughs> little... Little man. Good old Mabodov has everything under control. And that's not under my control. Well, you can't know about that, can ya? Ha! <laughs> Anything else? Or you will just continue standing here. It's like Lot's wife. Uh, okay, so I got some experience. I won't keep you any longer. Just, just a few questions. Care to change the subject? Uh... Apparently I cannot give anything out of him, okay. Right, I won't be bothering him anymore for now. Though I could try to check those lockers, but I'm guessing this is not the case. Okay, what about this guy? You see, a young man is gazing up in the ceiling as he complimenting something. He thought process almost uninterrupted. The debrief interrupts and the man lands down over his sketch pad and adds a few lines to his unusual driving. Having noticed to give you... Uh, having noticed to you, he gives you a friendly smile and nods. Oh, such a shame. I've already finished painting Starker's resting. You should be a perfect model. Just the type. How I can help you? Uh, feel like answering me a few questions? From I can tell, you're an artist. Yeah, he's an artist. Yeah, he even has like a sketchbook over there. The man places his chewed up pencil behind his ear and insensibly <laughs> shrouds his shoulder. I also thought that we have died out, of, uh, out after the great abstracts, but oh, there are still artists in the world. Some of them are even capable of making a living. Take me for example. I am I am awaiting for an order from a large publisher house. Maybe they need illustrations. And if they do, I think you'll be able to help you out as well. For uh, But for now, let's change the topic. Okay. Do you need any help? Well, not right now. I'm still... Waiting for good orders, okay. Uh, what you doing here? Any good rumors? Uh, white people trying to support the fading spark, the hide artist, the museum, yada yada. Uh, completely fucking useless. Okay, well this is the thing, okay. Because, like, some people will be like wondering why the fuck do I talk with everybody? Like, I richly speak with everybody I get stumbled upon. Well this is the thing I got from Fallout. Because, back in Fallout, it was actually like a good idea to sniff around and talk with most of the people. Because you'd be surprised sometimes who would give you an actual quest to do. The thing is, however, that the developers of this game, they've made almost everybody, almost everybody, a person that you can talk with. Now, don't get me wrong, this is the thing. Back in Fallout, if a person had like a, like a picture, like a model of his face, then you knew that was a very important NPC. So since I'm following the same rule, um, I try to speak with everybody. But the thing is that the developers of this game, they work at their asses, okay? Every, almost every single fucking character in this game has a fucking picture of his face. You know how the person looks like, okay? And now every single fucking person has, well, almost every single fucking person in this game has a dialogue option. It's not gonna be much, but you can actually talk with him, right? So I'm asking for rumors because I'm kinda like hoping to get some quests, basically. But the thing is that, you know, they really outdid themselves for this game. Because I spoke with the devs, they like contacted me like a few days ago, and I asked them, is this just like, you know, 
they, they did this on purpose. Like, is this every single person like really important? They're like, eh, no, we just, you know, wanted to add like life to everybody. So technically you can speak with everybody. Technically almost everybody has like a picture, but not everybody actually has like something important for you to, to, to like understand or whatever. Richard, what do you want? Better start with Richard. Oh yeah, okay, I know this guy. Um, I don't think he has a quest. How long is your breaking going to last? Break is going to last until I run out of money. Okay, that's nice. Uh, any rumors? No, oh, nothing can stink. Okay, so I'm basically walking around the camp, and I kind of like hope that I will stumble upon somebody who's gonna give me like a quest or something, because for now we only got the quest from the old guy on the ship that basically asks me to, uh, well, to take care of the head of security and the head of the... Oh, see, for example, this guy over here doesn't have anything interesting to say. Like, literally, he has only, like, this thing. And I think I spoke with this guy before. Yeah, we spoke with this guy. Uh, what you doing here? First, he needs a nurse to get his wounds done. He's resting, waiting for... Okay, so he's basically a traveler, so nothing important whatsoever. There are a few more people on the ship that I would love to talk with. Richard, and I think this guy over here is a guard. No, wait, not this guy. This guy. No, he is actually the guy that doesn't have anything to say interesting. Okay, so maybe some of those guys outside. Maybe you have something interesting to say. I know that once I pass this line over here, then I have to buy myself a new passage. Uh... The mustache guard gives you a straight grim look and takes his gun safeties off. Get out of here. Maybe I will. <laughs> that was quick. Wait, can I check this box? Alright, ammo. Don't try to steal anything. Yo, dude, is a fucking box lying outside of your guarding post. I can technically take it. And you're not supposed to bother me anyway. Anyway, let's go try to speak with the head of security. And hopefully... He will... Okay, that's his office. Yeah, that's his office. Hopefully he'll be able to uh, understand this brighter side of this conflict. But first, what do you want? Um, why are you looking in that window? You didn't really impress the Tidov Kai. He doesn't even answer the question. Maybe we could talk then. The man throws his place and arms crossed in his chest. I'm not interested in talking. Go away. Sure, what about barter? Would you like to barter with me? I don't have anything interesting. Bye. Okay, uh, right. Basically, those guys are mercenaries, so... You know, maybe we have, maybe we could try to get a quest from him. This guy looks like he has a metal armor from Fallout. The aged man in a cap walks around the room. He constantly moves furniture, even out, of, even out stacks of paper. Seems like he is an obsession with cleaning and keeping orders around the place. Upon seeing you, the man totters the side of his cap. You notice a small deck of cards in front of, in front of his pocket. Into cards, hey buddy! I <laughs> should like to play cards <laughs> once in a while. A shame that our broker doesn't play, even though he knows how. Uh, what games are you playing? <laughs> like everyone else, I'll play nuclear blackjack. Tell me the rules. I want to play. No, I don't want. I'm terrible at games like this. I'm not gonna even fucking bot your deck. Uh, okay, that's the same thing. Questions. Why are you running around doing what you do? It's just like I keep everything nice and clean. Nobody cares about the order of things around here. But I think it's very important. The traders always keep his papers neat. So why can't we? That's a good question. Uh, any rumors? Uh, he doesn't have anything interesting to say. Okay. So, yeah, basically... Oh, great. Beer. And then this thing? Tape. So basically, the guy keeps the bullock clean, technically. I was like, okay, whatever, dude. If you do, we have to. Can I check this box? Okay, this box is empty. What about this box? Empty. And what about this box? Empty! Would you look at that? The guard, uh, the head guard's guard, you notice how ridiculous the duty sounds, quickly throws a glance your way. Seems like his eyes wanted to tell you something, despite the man's serious and nonsense pose. Like I said, for a good reason, I won't let the siege, I won't let you see the chief. Listen, I have a message for your chief. Really? Huh? Now, so, what is it? I'm from uh, Lyodia Abramov, and he, it concerns trade. I am from the Secret Atom Organization. I'm, a, I'm from Fyodor Maksiewicz. It's about Paragon politics. 
the guard crosses his arms and lowers his head. Interesting. Okay, well, he all let me through, so. Yay! I just got stuck. Okay, guys, I need you to move away. Yo, I need to move inside. Can you, like, kindly fuck off? <laughs> Entering the room, you hear a cutter click. Turn it around, you find a mustache man in a cap aiming a gun at your belly. Hello, hello. And who you might be? Are you here? Speak up. Or I might as well shoot. Great. The man just. The man just his gun in your direction and closes one eye, as if he's better. As if he takes the better aim. Okay. Calm down, dude. I'm here with some important stuff. I don't like your tone, dirt head. So now you're going to die. Dexterity slightly disarmed the man. You swiftly close the distance between you, knock the pistol from him and gasp, and tackle him to the ground. You, f uh, you fight Circle for a few seconds, but he isn't going to give up easily. He headbutts you in the set room and shows you into his table. Loose papers fly around the room. <laughs> Great. Kick him while he's uh, laying on the back. Attention, look for some kind of weapon. Get back up. You quickly jump onto the table and hit the man in the jaw. With a sight, he collapses on the floor. Throttle him? Is that a good idea? Perhaps a terrible idea. Ah, he's not... <laughs> uh, he kneels in the stomach, retrieves his pistol and steadies his aim. Whoops! Ah, seriously? <laughs> uh, come on, really? Okay. Okay, okay! Oh shit, oh, wait, I wanted to aim. Hold on a second. Trying to aim! Aim at the face! That didn't do a lot of damage. <laughs> Let me guess, the guards are gonna probably go in now. No, the dog is trying to go in. No, the dog attacks the guards. This is stupid. <laughs> why the guy... Why he... Why, why he attacked me? What in the fuck? Okay, so let's try this thing one more time, okay? Because, like, attacking him won't work since my dog is gonna die. Personality does not work, so disarm him. Try to tackle him. Okay, material adds. Can I actually kick him while he's lying on his back? Because if I'm gonna get back, that's not gonna give me anything. Attention, look for some type of weapon. Okay, that's probably like an option. Material adds. Kick him while he's lying on the back. That failed. So immediately he, he gets up and he shoots me. Why? I've tried to put a few points into the material arts even though I am completely not using that thing and I don't feel like spending 30 points in material arts just to get like one quest done. So this guy basically, he sees you and he immediately aims at you. So you know what? I'm just gonna fucking kill you. Disarm him. Okay, there you go. Try to tackle the man. You fight Sarkos, uh, Sipklovsky for a few seconds but he isn't going to give up easily. He heads towards you in the side room and shovels you. Uh, shoves you into his table. Loose papers fly around the room. Okay, look for some kind of weapon. Grabbing, uh, grabbing up a heavy paper wave, you smash it into the man's skull. With a slight, he collapses in his heap. Jumping down from the table, you find yourself looming right above him. Knife him. A few quick jabs in his liver and kid kidneys are enough to calm him down. Permanently. Get up. Oh! You brought this thing up on yourself, dude. I was trying to get here and talk. Ooh! Makarov pistol. Would you look at fucking that? And I got a police cap. A police cap is a powerful symbol of the old world. Anyone wearing it would certainly earn some respect from the average wasteland dweller. Plus 10 to speechcraft. Thank you for the hat, I guess. Son of a bitch, I've tried to talk with him. I only wanted to persuade him that there are better options, but no! I'm gonna be all Soviet KGB type of douchebag, you know, and shoot you immediately on sight. I. Seriously? <laughs> this is so Russians, you know, uh, like... <laughs> what in the actual fuck? This is so Russian, uh, like, high status military person, you know? You open his desks, and what you have inside of his desks? Two glasses, and a fucking jar of cucumber. <laughs> and then the fucking <laughs> next container, what did I found? Four bottles of vodka. Yeah, that's exactly the f Oh, speaking of vodka, there's a- Oh, there is a chest hidden underneath his bed. Isn't that just lovely? Okay, take the cables and take the gunpowder because I don't think we're gonna have a use of anything else. Now let's- what's- Oh, this is nice. 
Very nice. Okay. Gonna take all of this thing. Thank you very much. And now I'm overwaved. Again. God damn it. Going through the door. Okay. I don't think they've heard me killing that guy, but. As they exit the room. Shit! Of the head guard, you are stopped by his subordinate. Hey. No, what was that all noise about? I've killed you, boss. <laughs> A sly grin spreads on his man's face. Be quiet about it. Don't tell anyone. Just go. I never liked the guy anyway. <laughs> well, that works for me. Thanks, boy. Later. <laughs> Just close the door, maybe, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. This is way too perfect. Well, looks like I could not convince the head of security to actually, like, you know... Go along with us, so yay! He's writing some kind of message to the subordinates using a long goose feather quill in ink. He looks inspired by noticing he puts down his work and looks up with a grim annoyance in his eyes. What was that? Did you did what you wanted to do? Don't bother me any longer. Fine, I won't. Hey, you're not supposed to pay me for killing off the security guy? Oh, maybe because I did not agree to actually do the quest for him. Well, isn't that a bummer? <laughs> Ah, suck it. God damn it. Like, that's actually, like, quite sad. You need to have, like, the specific ability to actually do the quest. Otherwise, this is just not gonna fucking work. So, like, that's... That, I, that's not something I like. I needed to have, like, either personality. Look and behold, my personality is zero. Well, it's one, because you cannot get lower than that thing. And... um. My material arts is also low. So, you know what? Not really a big fan of this output. <laughs> I thought I actually would be able to convince the head of security to also go, go along nicely, but apparently that's not the case. Okay, so he's looking at the door with the bored expression, but as you enter, his body transforms. His uh, back strains and his eyes... Uh, and in his eyes, a fire starts burning. He puts his book away. Good to see you about politi political bickering comes closer, he looks tense, uncertain, and at full hope of at the same time. To tell! The head merchant turned out to be a smart fellow, but I had to kill the head of, of the guard. Mother of God. Oh, uh, yeah, it was a possibility, but I haven't... I had hoped it wouldn't come to this. I was foolish, it seems. Nothing to be done about it. It's not a pretty situation, but it's still a solution. And you are... you want to thank for it. I'm flattered now regarding my payment. What do you think you do now? Yes, it was terrible, but I had no other choice. I understand. It's very sad and everything, but about to pay me now. So what's the plan now? Well, all I have to do is tell the authorities I am in charge of the guards now. And I hope they accept this news without argument. Hold on, shouldn't you pay me f Yep. Uh... Didn't you forget to actually pay me? Yo, dude! Ahem! Excuse me, let's talk when I return. Uh, let's hope you won't die. Sissy, if I'll have to buy myself another fucking ticket, I think I'm gonna go crazy. Where, where the fuck this guy's going? Uh... Dude? Where are you going? No, Sissy, where the fuck are you going? Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. He's going exactly to the place where I can buy tickets. <laughs> Why? He's going out inside. Uh... Now I will leave this place. What? Now I will lead this parade? What do you mean? Pentagon? <laughs> Precisely! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> yes, I am now the ruler. Not exactly, you still have the guy of trade to deal with. Glad to hear that. Good luck on the old post. Wait, what? Oh yeah, because he used to be a leader. Thanks. Now I will go learn more. Okay. Shit. Show them, Fyodor Maxchovich. Uh, yo, I'm still standing at the gate so you can pay me, you know, because as soon as I'm gonna exit the place, I'll have to buy the fucking ticket again. What was that all about? Yo, old man, have you done with your walking? <laughs> because you still need to pay me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start when I return. Yeah, you have returned. That's the best part about it. Yeah, sure. Clip off the fucking chair. So now what? Can I ask me some questions? Uh... Wait, what the fuck? 
You didn't pay me, didn't you? Son of a bitch, you didn't pay me! Motherfucker! You better fucking pay me now, you son of a bitch! Oh. Glasses. Oh, okay. Isn't that just nice? He had like a bunch of bottles and a little bit of rubles. Son of a bitch, he didn't fucking pay me! You bitch! This time, ask him about payment immediately. Oh, yes, right, I don't know. You dispose of a man without whom guarding Paragon may become a problem. I'm worried money will get scared in the new future. Take those 700 rubles, 4 tons of food, and 15 9mm cartridges, as well as those 2 packs of Kessa Pyramid. That's what I can afford. It's not much, but it should be a help to you. What do you do now? Well, all I have to do is tell the authorities I'm in charge of the guard now. I hope they accept this without... Yeah, 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 whatever. Right, you have good luck with that thing. I got my reward, even though that... Hey, it's not my fucking fault that the head of security was a stubborn idiot. Oh wait, we actually have to go to the pub. Hold on a second. <laughs> Going back, man. Because in this pub, there needs to be the guy that we need to send to OTOD because we need to perform the fucking voting. A middle-aged man with a bored smile on his face greets you and I'm clapping his hands. You've never seen him before, but he doesn't seem like he's a ulterior motive. He seems like the man is gen generally happy to greet all the passers-by. Oh, hello there, chop. If you had a seat on my shoulder, then I must apologize and advise. The comedian Nikita Konanov, who is me, turned out to be a little too sharp tongue for the local Burgundies. However, the cancellation of my show was reimbursed to me in free drinks, so my good mood is, isn't affected. I could even do a private show for you. <laughs> I tell you a joke, you, you just need to ask, I promise I'll make you laugh. Or, did I just have another reason to approach me? Well, actually, I'm here to hang out and talk. So you're a joker? Well then, tell me a joke. Tell me a joke. <laughs> Get ready to laugh! A career escapes from a traveling circus and wandered into the apartment of a ca caravan security coordinator, comrade Mabdevedov. Mabdevedov came back from his walk, looked at the girl and asked his wife, Hey wife, why did you hang a mirror in our house without asking me first? Hilarious, tell me another joke. <laughs> okay, I have a joke for you. A Westlander is asked a question. What do you do? And he goes, I'm an undertaker. Sure. And what is that to you undertake? What do you mean by that? I'm undertaking attempts to survive. <laughs> okay, that was actually a good one. Uh, let me another one. Okay, here was a great joke. Mimic says to a giant wasps, the ants from which I descended could carry 10 times their own wave. And the wasp answers. But the bees and wasps from which I descend, according to all known laws of uh, aviation, were too heavy to fly. And yet, they still flew. Mimic thought for a moment and said, Mimic thought for a second and said, Hmm, so why do the pretty humans call us mutants? Okay. Uh... Alright, listen here. A man from Otiode went fishing and caught a goldfish. And the goldfish said to him, Let me go and I'll make your wish come true. It's funny because it's really happened. Now this radiation is the best sense of humor. The dooms. <laughs> I <laughs> can't change the fucking subject. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. Three on four, alright? Three on four. I give him a solid three on four. And maybe those two people has to say something interesting. Uh, pardon, I'm interrupting you. The abandoned gentleman and his bodyguard raises his head at the same time. The bearded man speaks first. Cree irritated. What is it now? You're not looking for company. I'm looking for an official from Kazadimi named Ivan Ivanovich. Are you here by any chance? The man eyebrows drop from surprise and he exchanges a glance into his headroom guardsman. What makes you think I'm this Ivan, Ivan a village fellow? You fit the description. That's what my instincts tell me. I never said it was you. It's just made an assumption. <laughs> my instincts tell me. You fit the description. Do I? And who discovered me to you? Your mate, Dan, from the factory. Ivan even slaps himself on the forehead and gets just for you to sit down. Yes, yes, that's right. How could I forget? It's all about the elections in the village of Triode, yes? I agreed to help Denis Denisanovich with this particular task to recognize the process, so to speak. That's nice. In, in, in that case, it's time for you to be on your way. The village elections must be held. Do you even have the right to call an election in Triode? The man blows out laughing and his body smokes as well. <laughs> I'm, I, I've got a jacket and a pocket that. 
I even have my own car. Of course I have the right to call an election. By local standards, my authority is, is as official as it comes. That's nice. In that case, is it time for you it's time for you to be on your way? Why did you decide to help Dan? Dennis Dezovich and his gang's <coughs> army have recently become the official representatives of Krasidim in the wastelands. As a multiple official of the same city, I have a duty to assess our subordinates. Interesting. Okay. Was it this time already? Well, was uh, was to be done, I said, I would help. And so I must do it. Ivan Ovenish and his bodyguard get up from the table. Let's get the car ready. If if you need the ride, come along. There's still room in the car. I'll think about it. Okay, that's one thing done. And I don't think we have anything else to do in this village. Alright, so time to move on, ladies and gentlemen. We are going back to Odi Odi. Right, I don't think I have to do anything else in this city, so I think we are free to go back to Odi Odi and actually see what we can try to do over there. We're wearing her up right now. Should I give you the ride or do you prefer to walk? Yeah. I'm not in the mood. I, I'm not in the mood to walk all the way back. You climb inside of the old car, having checked the engine and uh, light their cigarettes, the owners join you. The vehicle shines a cloud of dust and he hits the highway. Nothing special happens in the journey. Fields, trees, the shrines, houses, and post war hordes fly by. You begin to drift away. What's on a hard rocking motion wakes you up. You arrive at the Toyota, even Ivanovich and one of his guards. Uh, head for a nearby building, while the other guard stays with, uh, with the car to ward off noisy villages. Exit the car. Yay! I don't know why, but it's always good to be back in this village, you know? <laughs> and this time we have arrived in style, I have to admit. Alrighty, so... Where did Ivan Ivan Ivanovinich went? Most of his guards, I believe. The large men are chanting about something near the large oak in the middle of Otiode. Possibly are careful to avoid them. You remember seeing both of those men at the factory. When they notice you, the main man is in the grand green hat speaks. Hey Dan, set us up to help because some of those folks don't want to vote. I don't need that kind of help. The other one steps up and is a looking character without any headwear. Isn't it a little early to assume things? That's right, you never know when you might need a strong hand. Why wait for those them to choose? Just ask and I'll speed things up a bit. And I'll use my two best arguments, the left as well as the right. The man cracks his knuckles as the demonstration shot. <laughs> don't go strip and trouble. We don't need in the fight of the middle of the village. The cut throws glance in one another and nod. Want? Wait goodbye and leave. I want to ask you something. What is it? I'm just saying. Bye. <laughs> that was quick. Alrighty, so uh Okay, those two of you. Let me guess, they probably went inside of here. No. That's the guard over there. Wait, isn't this the old man who used to... Yeah, that's that's the commander in charge. Former head of the village, Kozilov, Kaz sits at the table in the tavern. He's holding a glass of some kind of spirit. The old man is staring down in a mock at liquid. Sit at his table. Someday, right? Not, but does not look up from this glass. Right. I think you're right, comrade? Man left his heavy glaze and sights. Everything is fine. I'm actually glad things turned out this way. It's time for the village to pick a new leader. Inspect I don't know. I think you did good. It's hard to say when the right, what's right and what's wrong. That's true. The future can bring all sorts of surprises. If you don't stop on this way. Well, what do I know? I'm gonna try it. Maybe I'll start the garden. <laughs> right on. Don't fret, Kovlev. Life isn't all that depressing. Sounds awful. About time, you're not the young man anymore. Don't fret, Kovalev. Life isn't all that depressing. The man nods and suddenly parks up. I'm not scared or sad. I'm just doing some introspections. I thought retirement was going to kill me, but I have peace instead. Rock along now. You must have a lot of do. But this old man and all his time in the world now. Keep it up the chain, comrade. Well, I hope he's gonna be happy. I mean, he tried to do his best to keep the village in one piece, right? I hope so. I mean, if they're gonna try to kill him, then well... <laughs> Just so you know, I have experience in killing fucking caravans, so you better don't stand me in my way. Just saying. This time. Saying. Looks like I found Ivan Ivanovich. Yep. 
Uh, there you are, splendid. Listen, one of the candidates, local supply and maintenance manager, Grinkin, has already had a necessary political talk with the villagers. Kovalets have withdrawn from the race and lost touch with the reality. Now all we have to do is play our cards and write and we've done. Play our cards? How's that? Most people are ready for the election. Everyone will vote for the ward, uh, for the one that designated, designated cardinates. Some freshmen, fishermen wanted to run, but it was explained to him that only permanent village dwellers can take part. In other words, everything is going to ahem, <coughs> legal. Right, and uh, who are our candidates, apart from Comrade Greenkin? Ivan Avenish smooths out his collar and speaks in low voice. Apart from Greenkin, a tire-ended show, a local pub owner, volunteered to run in the elections. Denis Denisovich for this, it won't be a problem. He lowers his voice even more, almost a whisper. Grandkin thinks victory is already his, but this may not be the case. I put it blindly. Let's you and I decide the village fate right now. Who should we support? I believe you, as the factory representative, have the right to decide it. I'm in favor of supply and maintenance manager Grinkin. He has the right experience. I think Getia should win. After all, she represents fresh blood and new ideas. You know, that'd be like a twist. Yeah, sure. Let's 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 put the bar owner in the in charge and see how that thing's gonna go. Cast a quick glance at Grinkin, who sweats pockets and nods. I see. New ideas are good, of course. The lack of any kind of experience and her hot temperament, not so much. However, with Daniel Desarovich by her side, I'm sure she will implement beneficial politics for the village. In that case, you might be interested to learn that three are two, that three are two people in the village who are dead set against her candidacy. First, there's the wife of the treasury guardsman, a resourceful woman with a wide, stern face. I think her name is Katrina. She also ha set her husband against Katya and is minding the waters for everyone. Second, there's Greenkin himself. Someone should point out to him that he's in the wrong. An official n needs to educate about his politics, if you will. You won't have to search for him out. He's close by. You should also find that Katrina and convince her to change her mind. Is that all of the opposing? The rest are either indifferent or will vote the majority. But there is one more thing, of course. What is it? The elections have to go smooth as silk, by which I mean 100% turnout, like it was in the USSR. Made her in the peace. But the problem is that the two men in the village refused to vote. Worse, the reflect is confusing the other villagers. One is so-called Grandpa Semonio, who doesn't want to vote for Greenkin of the participants, and according to him doesn't want to place this cross on Katya. The other is the guardsman Ian, who decided that the democracy gives him the right to abstain. Those two troublemakers need to be brought into the line. I see. I'll try to convince them. I'm glad to hear that. Ah, I do love administrative work. Yeah, you don't say. All right, let's do this shit. Uh, I got an update in my in my my my, my journal. Let's see. Otiore. I decided to support Katya, the tavern keeper, at the local elections. I need to convince her main critics to vote for her. Those critics are. Katina, a local peasant, and Superintendent Grinkin. Old man Samoyo and even the guard do not want to vote. Okay, let's deal with that thing first. So, either it's this guy over here, or the guy to the north. I think it's this guy. It's probably this guy. Yo, fuckface! Uh. Oh, no, 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 but I think the old man is the guy from here, the guy that gave me the rifle at the very beginning of the game. Yeah, it's him! Old man Samuel scratches his hair bridly. When he sees you, he stands a little and then smiles his widest toothless grin at you. Oh, shoddy! All this lectures make me nauseous! I'm too old for this! Uh, can you tell me why you don't want to vote? What's that in hell? I don't like drinking and I beat a little catch you too much. Quite a burden looking out for the whole village. Speechcraft, please, old man, everyone needs to vote. Success, the old man sighs, takes off his hat, and touches his temple. Seems like he words made his old sceptic fake. What? I should report it, but I should adopt it. What can I vote? What can my vote change? Yeah, this is the fake, ladies and gentlemen. Votes can always change, right? Because, like, let's assume there's like voting, okay? And there are 10 people who can vote, okay? So, 
let's say three people vote or option B, two people vote on, a, on option A, right? So that's 50% from all the people, all right? Now imagine those five remaining people who say to themselves, what will my vote change? And imagine all those five people will go vote for option C. Do you fucking understand now what your votes can change? So if you're gonna have a uh, voting about, I don't know, about your prime minister, about the ministers in general, or about some local affairs, then move your fucking ass and go voting, okay? Just do it for me, because if not, I know where you live. Anyway, back to the old man. Uh, there are few people living in Toyodi, every vote counts. There are still, they are still going to elect one of them. Do you part? Yeah, let's go with the middle one, I guess. Old man Simeon puts his head back and nods. Oh, that's right, that's right. A jammed of what? I never died before, I'm sure I might as well try it out. Good, okay. One done, one to go. Yo, dipshit! Young guys is looking at the horizon, yeah, 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 okay, I know. Hey there, did you hear about the elections? I'll probably pass. Can we talk about you not voting? What is there to talk about? I have the right not to vote, so I won't. No, 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 no. The thing is that this is your fucking responsibility as a member of the community, let's put it this way. Is this how a true labor liberal thinks, comrade? You've betrayed the collective and speaking into the Lenin's smoothened face, which you descended into a self impersonate non voting state. <laughs> I think that worked. Yet. You're speaking like a Soviet exiator from the pre war times. Come on, I know what a collective wants, but I don't want to mess with the elections. It just feels wrong somehow. Well, what I can do, expect to switch my persuading strategy. At least you said you want. Why you don't want to vote? But. Uh, but how is the election thing wrong? Tell me. The guy spits on the ground and clicks his tongue. I don't like that there are only two candidates. Katia, okay. But she has no experience in politics. And I really, really dislike Grankling. He's boring. Fivik little man. So both options are awful. I tell you a secret, buddy. There are no other candidates. There are no idle candidates in democracy. Ever. So what should I do? Vote some random person? No thanks. If you won't elect a leader, some bandit will show up and name himself the new head of the village. What will you do then? Well, that's true, I suppose. Fine, you talk me into it. Oh, vote. Good. Now move your fucking ass and vote. Now you have to speak with this guy and convince him to fuck off. Yo! That's not him. That's... that's not him. But I think I can barter with you a bit. You have ammo. Oh, you have ammo. Lovely! I think the span is over here then. Grinkin, there he is! Alright. When he notices you, he snaps his fingers if it was... He got another sudden idea. I think it's ready for the election. Some minor details. What do you want? Uh, what do you... What do you know? This is exactly what I came here to chat with you. Uh, yes, what is it? Maybe I need a proper speech or something. Speech have. Listen, friend, it would be a better for all of us if Katya won. Failure, the man steps- oh no. Never heard anything dumb in my life. I have more experience, I'm older and I'm more personable. This is just stupid. You see, the village is in need of a drastic image change and I will come in ahead of the village. Isn't that a revolutionary change? Okay, definitely not gonna use the personality because my personality sucks. Well, that is true, I suppose. But Marx, Ingalls and Lenny, forgive me. Revolution isn't always a good thing. At least, I think so. Personality. Uh, okay, don't do that thing. That is just you. Everyone knows only a revolution might save the village. Fine. If such foolish measures are the only thing to save the village. He shrugs. Okay. I will vote for Katia. Let her be the head of the village. A wise decision. Okay. So now time to tell Katia the good news that she's gonna become the <laughs> leader of the village. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, woman. Hi, before you stand, Katya Radjenko, the local tavern proprietor. You hardly recognize her, dressed in clean clothes and wearing her makeup. She clearly tries very hard to make an impression, and it's actually worked. Upon seeing you, she smiles warmly and invites you to come over. Oh, hello! It's been. <laughs> I've been thinking about the elections. Pretty sad that Kamil Kovalov had to resign, but I think he's personally was okay with it. What are your chances of winning, though? The same as Greenskins. 
But that's up to the village to decide. That's not exactly true. Wait, what do you think? Will I win the elections? Yes. Thank you, even if I don't really think so. S thank you still, you're welcome. Well, I got to go. Wait, that's it? Apparently she just won the elections. I've stopped. Okay, Ivan, everything is set. Do your shit. How can I help you? Uh, what's your forecasting regarding the future of the village? It is a government, a strict one, addictive to the details and demanding of every separate social unit. Provided we succeed in organizing something like that here, my forecast will be nothing but optimistic. It's a location, infrastructure, and proximity to local resources such as drinking water, those fantastically abundant mushrooms, and a more or less healthy forest. All those factors promise a great future for Tiode, as long as these people don't fail. I'm starting to like this guy. Uh, okay, so... How do I start the elections? Can we about this place? What, 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 what? Well, Teodor must be the best local villagers. It has a great location. The perfect place to build a summer house, fresh drinking water and a clothes, and on hand those nearest tram ships. Especially if you got your own transport in the world. It's great. Great. Still, I don't know how to start the fucking elections. Yo! Decide to support Katya. Oh, wait. Uh, critics are Katrina. Where the fuck is Katrina? No, Sissy, what the fuck is she? I don't think she's in the... Wait, did he went to fix the guy at the factory? I'm uh, changing your elective... Uh, thinking about electing a village head. Okay, that didn't give me anything. Yeah, we've sent him to save the guy from the factory. One of the guys was almost dead, so... Uh, how exactly is that supposed to go? I don't know. Okay, where is the woman? I think she's over here. Is that a woman? Does not look like a woman. Stop bothering me! Can I pickpocket you? Okay, you don't have anything interesting. Where the fuck is the wo- Man. I think I found her. Yo! Yeah, that's her. <laughs> well, aren't you a beautiful sunshine? Elections, elections, so I kinda that made me question why I even have them. Uh, okay, what do you want? Spearscuff. Why are you so strong to support? I'll be voting to come drinking. He's a wicked look at the guy. He got Gumpton. He's experienced, all right? Experienced as a thief, as a liar, as a hater of old ladies. A woman becomes more serious as you speak. Seems like your words woke her up, tops of drinking. Well, this not used to me, but I always thought of the people show him respect and gratitude. He'll forget about his nasty old ways. You think otherwise? <laughs> Once a thief, always a thief. She sure does enjoy asking for bribes. <laughs> but but I never thought him were a thief, just an average politician. Just like in the good old days. But I think I'm, he's a real crook. Well, might as well give Katya a fighting chance. If anything goes wrong, we can always back up our results, right? Yeah, sure, sure. But now, do you vote for Katya? Good luck. Okay. I think that's all of them? Yeah. Time to speak with Ivan. Yo, Ivan, I'm back. Hello, dude. How can I help you? Everything is ready. I completed all the tasks. Every office seemed to be wasted. Alright, now we should start the most important part. Although there is a small matter I need to settle first. Continue to sink in silence. It's hard to, for me to ask it, but we need at least 30 stacks of paper. For the paperwork, you know. And paper isn't always... isn't cheap nowadays. Are you serious? Where am I going to get this much paper? Oh my, you should see in your face. Calm down. You forgot everything we already. I just need some novice, you know. Wait, what? Well, what do you know? Never thought I would turn out to be such a joker. We're wrong. This work isn't a lot of fun, so I like to mix things up from time to time. Fine, jokes aside, we need to get this show on the road. Ivan Evanich slaps his bodyguard on the shoulder and he makes his way out. Wait for the waters to arrive. The villagers surely begin to gather in the building entrance, clanting and whispering among themselves. A few of them are just li the just link for the opportunity to see inside. Even Ivanovich bodyguard even has to s has to scare some of them away with his short wooden club. Ivan Ivanovich meanwhile prepares some paper and pencils, which he later distributes among the villagers. Even though the village is small, voting takes 
whole two hours, during which some people start political arguments, which have nothing to do with the elections. A pig burgers in the devoting area, and a fisherman from outside the village is uh, coughed trying to vote for himself. Finally, everyone leaves, even even when she looks upstanded and a stack of paper in his hand. Well, uh, it doesn't take a math wizard to know the result. So who won? The man looks at the result again, whispers softly, almost without moving his lips, and finally speaks up. The youth won, by which I mean in charming Katia. Interesting. Never thought the crowd wanted to change so badly. Perhaps the old patriarch ways weren't to the people's liking after all. That Katya, I recently found out, she's pretty a smart girl, although smart and always a good political needs. Without them, it would be even harder for her to settle into the new role. Good luck to her, I guess. Good luck and quick learning. Ha! Huh. The fascinating word of nasty democracy. Now what? Now? Nothing. The deed is done, and I'm off to Crescent Demi again. It was nice meeting you. Say hi for Dan for me. Uh, if one day you find yourself walking past the Chamber of Commons, don't be shy. Come in and ask for Ivan Ivanovich. We'll call it just now, after all. <laughs> Shoot to do that. Good luck on your journey, Ivan Ivanovich. The official nods to you, gathers his things, stands a few moments at the door, and finally leaves. A minute later, you hear his car static outside. Ivan Ivanovich has left. Or Triode. Well, looks like we did a good deed. So, yo, Katya! <laughs> <laughs> or should we now say? As you walk to the tavern, you notice Kamal of the former head of the Otiode sitting in one of the tables. He takes a drink from time to time and strokes his muscle. Thank you, he invites you over to a gesture. Care to keep me company? There's so little to do nowadays. Sure thing. I, I need to rest after my journey. How's life? Need any help around here? No, how I miss? My car. My good old Moscovich. My little blue Moscovich. You know, before this Ivan Ivanovich visits that, I didn't think it was possible to find a driver for car in the award. But it seems there is room for miracles in the wastelands. There's a lot of cars in the wastes. No miracles indeed. You was correct. That shocks. But little passenger cars like Ivan Ivanovich had? No, no. Never seen one after the war. So, you want me to steal this car for you? <laughs> Gives you a weird look and he laughs out loudly. <laughs> My god. No. My dear friend, not at all. It's a funny idea, but though, we travel a lot. Fro, have you ever seen a car that's comp not completely ruined? I saw a car in a skirtable condition at Dan's factory. Looks good, but I doubt it's working. What do you think? A spark of hope flashes in Kovalev's eyes. He fights back his worries. He down his entire rink. This is great news. Now, you just have to get in here and I'll use my skills to fix it. We'll get it fixed. Give her a fresh coat of paint. Such a shame there is a few drivable roads, but still. Are you going to pay me? How will I get how will I get there? Here, it's lacking wheels, and I doubt you have the power to push it all the way. You can ask the caravan people. They have their own cars, and it's easy to meet them in the west. The goods won't come cheap, but you can always haggle. Well they are, comrade. If I'll see if I can find a truck caravan. Fine, I'll go look for a caravan. Okay, so what the fuck I need to do from him? Wait, hold on a second, factory. Wait, what? Because the Dimi? Uh, no. There was yeah, what the other got selected. So you want me to bring you the car? Huh? Did you manage to find a car? I'm still working to get you surprise into your the other. Should you talk about something else? You can ask the caravan people, they have their own cars, and it's easy to meet them in the waste. The goods won't come cheap. Hmm. Fine, I'll look for a spill on the floor and leave. Fine, I'll find you a fucking caravan. God damn it. Okay, where is Katya? Don't tell me she's in the house. Stay vigilant, comrades. Yeah, there she is. Hello, Katya. Katya is completely immersed in her paperwork. She gazes up slowly and nods to you. Through she seems unsure what's going on. Hey, I'm... Uh, I'm here. She shows you a document with a powerless smile. Working and working all day long. And I came to con congratulate on your victory. Thank you very much. He wants to make the girl blush a bit. And she again lowers her gaze in a sketch of purples. Can we talk about the village rumors? Stuff like that. Listen, can we maybe talk somewhere private? Drink some tea? Shoot the shit? You know. This is why I'm here. Could you possibly lend me some money from the village funds? 
No, 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 no. We're gonna ask about that thing. Oh! She has a perfume! Woman only! Interesting. Uh, any rumors about the village? Uh, fine. It'll be a good opportunity to check my knowledge as a leader. I should know about every nook and cranny in the place. It's hard to be the boss in those places. Uh, and it's just think rumors. Hardest thing about leadership. The hardest? Katya chuckles. Understanding comrade Kovalos hard warding. Comrade Mikovic is better. And he's a medic. Hmm. Okay. Right. It's hard to be the boss in those parts. Katya sides. It's not easy for sure. I always second guessing myself. Mostly I feel that when I finally make a mistake, I won't recognize it. That's why I'm reading every paper I have here before I put them away. Okay. Hey, so she's doing a good job. That was, that was a good idea to put her into charge. I mean, what's the worst that could possibly happen? And if she ever needs a strong mercenary to help her, I'll be there with my rifle loaded. I really hope that Dan would be... Oh. What? I don't recommend going into the camp right now. Dan and Sh Shik Shak has gone to fight recently. We all knew there would be trouble some sooner or later. They disrespect each other and now they are literally at the other throat. The main loyals are also divided. Some continue to follow them, some side of Shishrak. Things are coming now, but I think this is the silence before the storm. <laughs> Do you want it? But I'm getting out of here, man. <laughs> many a good many a good guy will find in the coming fights, and I'm not going to be one of them. If Dennis wins, I'll come back. If not, I I won't. Damn. Just know it's going to kick off soon. Well, um, okay. What's the reason of the fraud, though? Nobody tells us grunts anything. Some internal dispute, I think. Conflict of interest, the kind of thing. Some say fighting Dan is like fighting the wind, but Shishak is experienced. He won't attempt to cop unless he the odds were on his side. That's why I'm getting out, and I hope you, for your sake you do the same. Well, good luck, I guess. Yep, you too. Bye. Ah, fuck. The combat started immediately. What the hell is going on over here? W where are the gunshots? Not a miss inside of the factory. It's probably inside of the factory, isn't it? Son of a bitch. I didn't solve all of the quests inside yet. Oh, no. This is bad. This is bad. This is really bad. Oh, shit. Bandit killed. Ah, uh, this is really not good. That's a lot of death inside, you know. Bandit took critical damage on his body. What in the fuck is Dan? Is it inside of his house? I hope he is. Okay, get inside. Let's see. That's... Who the fuck is that? Okay, those are friendlies. And those are not friendlies. Okay, one... Eh, they actually link this thing on their own. But I'm gonna help anyway. Okay, get over here. Paco has arrived, boys! <laughs> what the actual fuck is going on over here? <laughs> Holy shit! That guy decided to hide. Slight injured. Okay, so they are holding the line and I have to kill them before they're gonna get through. <laughs> this is not good. Never mind, he's already dead. That was a nice shot, you have to admit. Almost dead. Okay, Dan goes in front, I guess. Almost dead. Healthy. Okay, this is all nice and dandy. Uh, right, so I need to have four points. I can move for six points. Okay, let's go here. And I'm gonna try to do aim a shot at this guy in his chest. But it killed! Good job! No. I don't know where Dennis is. This could possibly mellow the factory gang. Took damage. Jab it! No, please don't tell me this is Dan. Which one of them is Dan? Ah, fuck, I have no idea. Dan needs to survive this. He really needs to survive. Okay, this is what? Five, six. Uh, I need to have five tiles. Okay, get over here. Slightly injured. Aim at the chest. Okay, that's 12 damage. 
Dan, don't do something stupid. Uh oh. Yeah, that's Dan. Fuck it. I save it just in case if Dan's gonna die. Uh, okay, I need to move five tiles and aim at this guy. Right, aim at his chest. 17 damage. Okay, slightly injured. I don't think he's gonna kill Dan, but... Never mind, he's almost dead. Oh, he healed himself. He knives Dan. Knives him again. Moves away. And he's dead. Okay. Can we finish combat? Yo, guys, can, can I finish combat? Thank God. Okay, yo, Dan, how's things? Oh, that's what I call a clinic of the drunks. Yeah, don't say. Can I check the bodies? Or oh, do you guys actually want to agree? You do agree. Have some. And she look at this. A bunch of keys. A number of keys joined together in a metal ring. Fif 32 lock, uh, lock picking. That is very awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, Dan, war is over. Yeah, well, uh, care to speak with me? War is over. <laughs> um, guys? Like, I had a quest for you, from you, with you, what the shit. Yeah, I don't have any more quests inside. That's not good. So I actually had to leave the, the zone and came back over here, but Dan is back at his desk. Nancy taps his foot. When he notices you, he twitches at his bullet had flown past his head, but quickly regains his compassion and addresses you in his usual cold manner. Oh, it's you. Yes, it's me. I see you haven't been bored while I was gone. Don't you think I deserve a simple thank you at least? Shrug. <laughs> I came to finish what Shishrak started. Die! Okay, whatever. <laughs> um, yes, Shishrak screwed us over and now he's dead. Fru, I'm afraid that's not the end of it. What? What was the reason of your conflict? It has been brink for some time. Shishak fraud had us was quote unquote too soft. He was useful, but I was keeping an eye on him. Guess I missed the warning signs. Okay, but he's dead now. Shishak's dead, alright, but he obviously had a compromise on an outside. I saw a lot of the new faces among his followers. Not my guys. Too bad they all died and ran away. Would like to interrogate one of them. The boss puts his mustache like a favorite pet. Listen, I might have another job for you. I'm all ears. Sure, but first you could pay me for the for those elections, Tenagans. Oh right. How did it go? Well, Katya won. Katya? From what I've heard, she's a smart girl, which means she'll deal with us. We're their only hope in the world. Whatever Atiyoda likes it or not. Fine, hold on. I'll get you your money. Dan retrieves a hefty envelope from his pocket. Free. 400 rubles. The job was much easier than the other ones before. Dan, you're a honest man. I helped you out with the mutinity and everything, yet my reward is so little. Dan sides. Fine, here's more money. But don't ask me for a rice again. Just take it. You take the money and wait in your hand. The envelope is nice and heavy. Smiling, you throw it with the rest of your things. 500 rubles. Nice doing business with you. Uh, okay, anyway, you were talking about some kind of job. What is it all about? Like I said, Shishak couldn't be working alone. Here's too many outsiders on his side. He could have gotten so many either in Peregrine or Kazadimi. And maybe he got his orders there too. So, nothing incorrect, but you have, you suspicious. Fine, where I should start looking. That's not an easy question I have to answer. Through it's hard to, for me to admit, it's not entirely sure. Go to Paragon and visit the catacombs under Kasadimi. Go to Paragon and visit the catacombs under Kasadimi. I'm pretty sure the answer is out there somewhere. Hold up a sec. I want to mark those places in case you've never been there before. Dan takes the map and circles Paragon again and Kasadimi is also. After looking at the map again, he hands it back to you. Here. Okay. Great. Anything else? Just questions. Uh, so how does it feel to survive the immunity with your head still firmly affixed to your shoulders? Like one of my wounded comrades told me as the boys were injured with him, uh, injecting him with the morphine. Feels good, man. But it's too early to relax. I'll be on my guard from now on. I won't even let a fly pass through our camp without proper discipline. Good thinking. Uh, what the future for the factory? We have one job, to finish what I started, to enforce some kind of order in those lands. I will simply become a bit more 
strict. Yeah, sure, that sounds awesome. Okay, so I think that's all of the thing. Right, thanks, man. Much appreciated. Bye. Hey, right, ladies and gentlemen, so we have solved some issues around the, uh, the factory. So now apparently we have to go to Krasadimi, to apparently the biggest city in 8 I'm running playing game. And we're gonna try to solve the quests over there. But that's gonna be the thing, ladies and gentlemen, that we're gonna try to do during the next episode. I also need to look for like a caravan to uh, totally the car from the factory back to Otiode. But as I said, that's gonna be the thing we're gonna try to do during the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you liked the episode, please subscribe a lot. I'll see you in the next video.